Hi guys, this is Beth here. Today we're going to be talking about how to treat at home those tiny little ice cold newborn bubs that you find out in the paddock in the morning. Head over to my YouTube channel to click subscribe below so that you don't miss out on the next one and I'll see you shortly. Hi all, welcome to another episode of Sears the Vet, I am Sears. So as most of you know, my area of expertise is critical care and treatment of farm animals. And a particular passion of mine is obstetrics and neonates, so care of those tiny little infants, mostly lambs and goat kids in my area, but also calves and crea. Now what we're talking about today is something that comes up really, really commonly, cold, sometimes even comatose babies found out in the paddock. Now this is aimed at those that have become quickly cold and low in blood sugar. If there is a true disease, underlying this and the little guy is horribly dehydrated or suffering from an infection or worse then of course a vet visit is absolutely needed to put you in the right direction so make sure you're treating the right condition i would always recommend a vet visit the reason i want to discuss this is that with this particular condition treatment is very simple but usually lacking when people attempt it at home because they don't understand what's happening on the inside so generally you find a tiny cold infant and people just want to try and warm it up but that's not going to be enough so what's actually going on here this is a syndrome that we call hypothermia starvation syndrome. Baby ruminants are born with reserves of what we call brown fat. This is an emergency supply of fat that they only have as newborns and it's packed in around the organs, predominantly the heart and the kidneys. A developing fetus lays down this type of fat on the inside so that they can immediately regulate their own body temperature when they're born to get them through those first few hours of life in a potentially really cold environment while waiting for their first warm feet. Now it's very much a chicken and egg situation. Either they're so cold that they rip through their fat reserves and don't have the energy to stand for a drink, or they don't stand for a first drink, so mismothering, rejection, weak, they were born underneath a fence, who knows what, and without that first drink, they slowly use up the fat reserves. But either way, they can't keep themselves warm. Either way, by the time that you find them, they're gonna be cold and down in the paddock, they're gonna be both deathly cold and critically low in blood sugar. The take home message here is one, they need to be warmed actively. Wrapping them in towels is not going to cut it. Use an emergency blanket if you have one, get the fan heater going, pad the bed with hot water bottles, of course, protect them from burns. I highly recommend buying a digital thermometer and monitoring the rectal temperature as well. If they are below 33 degrees, they're generally gone. Below 36 degrees, they're unlikely to be able to warm themselves up. Try and aim to get their temperature above 38 degrees, then tone it back and just keep them warm from there. We obviously don't want them to overheat either and heating them too quickly can also be disastrous so don't turn a fan heater straight on them. And number two and just as essential is to get sugar into them and this is usually what people are missing. Without sugar in the bloodstream the brain and eventually the whole body cannot function and we know that there isn't any because that's how they've ended up in this state. The brain needs sugar to function. Persistently low blood sugar leads to brain malfunction, and if it's prolonged, this can eventually be irreversible damage. So get sugar into them. If you just warm them and don't get sugar in, congratulations, you're now gonna have a warm brain dead baby. Now as a vet, I would be putting an animal on an IV drip and giving sugar slowly but steadily directly into the vein while actively warming. Another option is you can give an injection of dextrose directly into the abdomen. This probably isn't something most of you are gonna be able to do at home, but there are some farmers that will know how to do it. If they've had training, um, it can go wrong, so please don't just go stabbing them if you don't have a clue what you're up to. But if you've got a large flock or herd and it's something that you can have your vet train you how to do, then that's awesome, it's a good skill to possess. But back to the rest of um, you at home caregivers. One of my favorite methods for owners to use is glucose powder. Now I dispense this out at the clinic, and all you do is you just rub the powder on the gums every five minutes or so and it absorbs across the gum, across those mucous membranes. Of course you do have to have a certain level of blood perfusion to the gums for that to absorb efficiently and when they're in shock that, that perfusion of the blood does, does shut down but it's completely safe, it's absolutely zero risk and you are going to get some sugar into them that way. Now in my opinion and experience I do not recommend force feeding by squirting milk down the throat into an infant that is comatose or even very weak, there is such high risk that milk is gonna go into the incorrect chamber of the stomach and inflame the lining there, making them feel sick and less inclined to want to drink in the future. They also lose their swallow reflex and gag reflex. So worst case scenario is you can very easily squirt milk into the lungs if they breathe in at the same time. And now you've got a little one with aspiration pneumonia and we could lose it that way. But as long as they're conscious, gaining strength and have a good suck reflex, we wanna get that colostrum into them nice and warm. 
Keto syrup is another option. Again, add it to the milk if they're well enough to suck to give them an additional booster of sugar. Um, I don't use it a lot in the really young ones, not in the emergency resuscitation phase at least. I'd recommend to reach for the glucose powder first just for safety and hold the ketol until they're drinking well. Now remember we had one, actively warming, two, getting sugar into them, and three, and just as crucial, is aftercare at home. Now this tiny little thing that you have just brought back from the brink of death has no fat reserves left at all, and that is why it was dying. It has lost any ability to regulate its body temperature between milk feeds, so for the next week at least, and I would normally be going for a few weeks, it needs to be kept warm. Don't put it back outside in the cold night, you'll end up right back where you started. I would also recommend feeding small amounts very often to try and help maintain that blood sugar as stable as possible, okay? So 10 to 12 times across the 24 hour period. So actively warm them, get sugar in immediately, and then support them for the next few weeks until they've grown and laid down some new fat reserves again, okay? All right guys, I'm gonna leave it there. If you found this helpful, please subscribe, comment, thumbs up. I'll try and answer the first few questions that are posted, but you need to be posting them over on the YouTube channel so I can see them, and I will see you next time. Cheers for checking in guys. See you later, bye-bye.